Well, let's just get some government reaction uh, straight away to this. I'm joined by Health Minister Maria Caulfield. Now, I know we're going to speak to you shortly about these new surgical hubs that are being announced across England. But I do just want to get your reaction immediately, um, Ms Caulfield, to the uh, new price cap. It's hiked by more than 80%. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's disappointing news uh, for households, uh, which will be a very worrying time. But that's why um, earlier this year, we we, we had um, estimates that it would go up uh, to this sort of level. And that's why uh, the support that's going in now was put in place. So things like the uh, £150 off people's council tax, the £400 that's starting um, next month off people's energy bills, um, the £650 targeted support to 8 million of the, the poorest households in this country. That's why those measures were put in and announced earlier that this is here, so that they would be in place uh, for an energy price cap increase. Now, of course, um, that may increase further when the energy price cap is reviewed again. And so the new Prime Minister uh, will want to uh, very early on um, announce uh, further measures to help should the en- energy price cap go up even further, which is a realistic uh, possibility. Indeed, yes, that's the problem, isn't it, here? We've had, um, it feels like, uh, well, weeks of, of just as, as you know, it's been, we've been accused of having a zombie government. Nothing has really been happening while we have this leadership race going on. Um, and, and, you know, we've had these predictions up 80% just for October. That is going to, it's predicted on very reliable predictions that it will go even higher in January and again in April with the cap, you know, looking at around £5,500 from April. Um, something needs to be done really soon. And, and whether, I mean, I don't know whether you support Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak, but whoever is in power, they need to get on this immediately. And this government really needs to sort this out. Well, I would disagree that, that nothing's been happening. You know, we have got the £150, uh, which went into people's bank accounts um, in, in recent weeks. And for those that haven't received theirs yet, I would urge them to contact their local MP, who will be able to help them w- with that process with their local council. We have got the, the extra £300 that pensioners will be getting on top of their winter fuel allowance. But I the think the problem bit. is, is the situation has changed, isn't it? Um, yes, of course, people they- appreciate that. But I don't think the situation has changed. We expected uh, this level of rise, and that's why we put in those measures, such as a rise in the national in- insurance threshold. So that's an extra three hundred uh, pounds in-, in people's pockets, and the energy price cap itself is saving households around £700. If the energy price cap was scrapped tomorrow, and that's why we brought it in, um, you would be paying, households would be paying equivalent to what businesses are paying at the moment. Businesses don't have an energy price cap. And if you look at their bills, they're significantly higher. So the energy price cap in itself, while it's very um, uh, concerning that it's rising at such levels, is actually capping bills for households. And it's important to remember that we brought that in, um, not knowing that this situation would occur. But that in itself is roughly saving... um, um, households about seven hundred pounds a year, but of course, as that rises, we will do more to help those uh, to help people across the country, whether they're you know the lowest income families. Uh, but I think everyone's uh, feeling uh, the pressure at the moment uh, with this price uh, coming on top of inflation and coming on top of uh, interest uh, rises for mortgage um, and homeowners. So uh, you know there will be more support coming, but there is significant support already in place um, to deal with this too. I think many feel that the support we are getting just isn't going to uh, touch the sides, really. I think that is the concern. So are you confident that the next leader will be significantly increasing the support for households and indeed for businesses, the smaller businesses who are going to really struggle with this? Are you confident that there will be some support coming once we have a new prime minister in place? Yeah, I think both candidates have said that. And if you look at Rishi's track record, some of the support that's coming through now to, to which preempted uh, this uh, price increase, uh, you know, he's got a track record there of, of helping all households, whether it's the £400 off the energy bills, whether it's the £150 off uh, council tax payments, whether it's the national insurance um, reduction, which came through last month. You know, these are all, you know, in, in, collectively make a big difference uh, to people's uh, incomes. Um, 
Um, but we, you, of course, you know, both candidates have said that one of their first priorities uh, when they become prime minister is to look at this. And, and some of these measures, you know, we don't know what the next uh, energy price cap rise will be. And so it's important that we um, look at that as that comes around, because that may vary. And global energy prices are very variable uh, across the board at the moment. And so this is it's not something that you can necessarily announce now. It has to be targeted um, as those increases come through as well. OK, now, um, I appreciate you talking to us on the energy um, situation, because I know we had uh, got you here to talk about um 50 new surgical hubs which are due to open across England. Now, this is to help reduce the COVID backlogs. Um, so these will be on existing hospital sites. Uh, your um, boss, the Health Secretary, Stephen Barclay, said they'll provide at least 100 more operating theatres and 1,000 more beds with the target of delivering almost 2 million extra routine operations over the next three years. Um, so just tell us a little bit more about how these hubs are going to work and um, Will it indeed last as a permanent thing or is it just a sticking plaster to get us through this COVID backlog? Well, these, obviously, these will help with the, the COVID backlog. And we've already um, tackled those people who've been waiting for two years or more. So last month, we got through that group of patients. And that was by uh, doing 22,500 operations since the start of the year. And that was using um, some of these new surgical hubs. We've got 91 that are open already across the country. And they tackle a range of operations from specialist surgeries such as eye operations, uh, or orthopedic hip and knee replacements right through to general surgery and they will be there for um, for the future so these will tackle the, the COVID backlogs but they will be there for the future um, so that we really want um, patients not to be waiting any longer than they need to for surgical operations and the beauty of these surgical hubs is although they're on existing hospital sites they are standalone uh, facilities so if there's a COVID outbreak in the rest of the hospital they're not having uh, to uh, stop uh, the are providing surgery because they're a standalone unit. They're not impacted in the same way if a and is full and you need to get patients into hospital beds in the main hospital. So you can predict and uh, deliver uh, surgical operations in a much more um, a kind of routine capacity and be able to get through those sheer number of patients that are waiting uh, to have operations at, at the moment. I mean, if you look at the Moorfields Eye Hospital that has one of these units, they're now doing roughly about 725 eye procedures a week, uh, which was around 120 before that. So that's the scale of the difference that these uh, surgical hubs can make. And I'm really pleased we're rolling these out across the country um, to try and help uh, get patients their operations much more quickly. It's interesting how you mentioned the Moorfields Eye Hospital there. You'll be very aware your colleague, the Health Secretary Steve Barclay, was uh, there yesterday, approached on the street in London uh, by a woman angry about the lengthy waits for ambulances. Let's just have a listen to what she said. Well, don't you think 12 years is long enough? Yes, and we 12 are years? Thinking... You've done f- all about it. No. People have died and all you've done is nothing. People are really um, upset and angry about whether it's waiting for an ambulance or waiting for a hip operation. Um, I mean, in your role as health minister, I mean, what is your reaction to hearing the real upset and anger from, from a lady there just on the street who's obviously just got so fed up? Of course, you know, you can't close down a health service to routine care for two years and not then have pressure the other side of that, whether that's people waiting for operations or whether that's um, people who are are more unwell now because uh, during COVID they couldn't get to be seen or their conditions developed and and made them worse. You know, last month in July, um, the ambulance service had uh, 3.6 million uh, calls. That's 200,000 more than this time um, last year. Um, And we also had, uh, still have significant numbers of COVID patients in our hospital. We're living with COVID now, but COVID hasn't gone away. And that also impacts um, on the ability of the health service to have that flow of patients um, from A&E up onto the wards, which then has an impact on the ambulance service with ambulances queuing um, outside uh, their local A&Es, which has a knock-on effect on uh, the call waiting times for people waiting for an ambulance. I was out with uh, ambulance crews earlier this week and it is very difficult. We are experiencing winter time pressures at the moment, but as a government, we are supporting the ambulance service. We we uh, literally uh, just at the beginning of the month um, uh, announced a, a new ambulance contract with the St. John's Ambulance to try and take some pressure off 
um, the emergency ambulance service because we recognise the pressures that they're facing and helping people get out of hospital quicker so we can free up beds um, and helping people stay out of hospital in the first place but also um, staffing the ambulance service with more call handlers than we've had before will help. But there isn't a silver bullet. And, you know, I, you know, I've got constituents, I've got family members. We all use the health service. We all know how um, stretched it is at the moment. And we have got winter coming, which is normally our, our busiest time of the year. So we are putting in a lot of measures at the moment. And, you know, I share that, that lady's frustration. Um, I worked in A&E as a nurse before I was an MP. I know just how difficult that constant uh, pressure is for staff. Um, but I just want to reassure people, whether it's the surgical hubs, whether it's new ambulance contracts, uh, whether it's the new make ready ambulance centres that we're opening up across the country, we are um, doing as much as we can to relieve that pressure. But it is going to be a difficult few weeks and months um, as we head into winter, which is normally the, the busiest time of the year for our emergency services. OK, appreciate your time this morning. Maria Caulfield, Health Minister there. Thank you very much.